the entrance is more like the ending of the story, um, but it gives sort of a, a view of um, several kinds of ideas. Um, cast things that were um, once wax, uh, works that are wax, and um, applied with a brush, and um, another work which is applied with um, dripping. We structured the show really sort of chronologically um, um, moving into this, uh, into the gallery here. The initial works on paper, the Yucca series, were the first works that I started making serially, that meaning that um, I made composition after composition of the same subject matter, and eventually it started to change. So um, the figures started to, you know, I, I went from making works that were um, after life, and then I started devising um, compositions with the blossoms and also stylizing the blossoms. The blossoms then um, became more abstracted and simplified and um, started to take, I started to use a grid formation um, to, um, to explore that idea of flattening the, these um, three-dimensional shapes, the yuccas. And so I got very involved with making the grid, and, and you can see a couple of these works here. Um, and also scale, where I was making works on paper for about 12 years, and they all tended to be fairly small, about this big at the largest. And um, then I started working on paper twice that size, and then double that size, these 60 by 40 inch. And I thought, well, what would happen if I made a 10 foot watercolor? So I did it, I made three of them. At one point then, around 1996, I decided to make, um, deliberately, to make something other than works on paper, and um, started working with oil and encaustic, and using those two mediums separately, encaustic immediately spoke to me as more, more um, sculptural. Each, each stroke was a sculpture. So, um, I, I made works in black and white for two years, and here's a, a good example of that work. Um, this grid, which also can be shown horizontally or vertical. I wanted to include this work in the show because it made me think of the landscape, um, the sky and ground perhaps. But it was at the same time applying wax to natural pieces of wood and um, I, I saw this handheld piece as a scepter. It felt good in my hand. It felt like it's something like a club. And I made it something like this naturally formed club. Um, which is maybe benign, but also um, threatening. And this, this work here, is, which is called Wound, um, it's, it's green and caustic, is the, suggests the chlorophyll of all plant life. And I, I was sort of becoming involved with the idea that all of these cut limbs were, had an analogy to the human body, which, which is that it's like an amputation. So these are like limbs that have been cut and so suggesting bleeding and coagulation and healing. I'm still working with the grid, and um, in different ways you can see it here, um, but at one point I decided to change the, um, the, uh, the game, I guess, and decided to throw paint, and in these two works here, Secret Garden and um, Crucible, paint is, you see, the painting is started by throwing paint in different directions, and the, the big difference for me there was that the grid was about man-made right-hand structures, and, um, and these works were, curves were about nature. So the, I, the cue came from, these, from throwing paint and um, building up these works. Under here, we have the, the four seasons, and um, we deliberately put, the, put these uh, separate in the exhibition and colored the walls so that you could see them perhaps unified. This painting, like the silver painting up front, was strictly um, dripped on after I made a, a flat ground of gray. Then I took the loaded paintbrush and made these lines, which hark back to times um, when I was making drawings that had very similar qualities. <clears throat> these kind of rococo flourishes, these round curlicues and um, gentle um, curves. But this piece is also a tribute to Albert Durer's um, great piece of turf, which was one of my favorite works from um, my days as a student, and maybe before that, when I was a, a, a child, I think I saw this beautiful image um, of this, this close-up of nature by this German Renaissance painter um, of something relatively unimportant, but it was a tangle of, um, of weeds and um, 
different growing material that was elevated to this important status, this highly detailed thing that I responded to and I always thought I wanted it in my work. I wanted to have strong detail. These were some of the qualities that early on um, my work was fairly representational and somehow eventually moved away from that but ultimately returned to some of those same ideas of, of, of detail and uh, craft and developing things through um, developing ideas through um, through layers of, of, of paint. So uh, here's an example of, of, of relating words to each other and, and I saw this as sort of a humorous moment in the show and I think there is a great deal of humor in quite a few of the words. Um, but I mentioned the scepters earlier and here are the baseball bats which I, I saw as the American scepter and um, and they were made during a time, um, during, during the, uh, the Bush years when we were at war, which, which was not really a war. But anyhow, we won't go into that. Um, some of these bats are a, are a celebration of the game, but um, baseball bats have also been used to hurt and kill people, so they're, they're treated as weapons sometimes by me. Uh, this first bat is Jackie Robinson, and uh, it's like an African fetish, nail fetish, and with one, one single bronze nail with a flower on it, um, um, Oscar Wilde, O-W, meaning uh, saying owl, and Kent State, um, which is the silver, the stainless steel um, piece. And these boots were my National Guard, Army National Guard boots, and the, um, the chair was a tribute to Van Gogh, who was one of my favorite childhood artists as well. Ed Ruscha, who um, is an artist who makes very flat works of words, um, I made this tribute to him. Uh, three-dimensional letters um, that you can't read from the side, but once you're directly on it, you can. And occasionally include, leave things like pairs from the paintbrush so that you know that it was made with a paintbrush. Little, little, little things like that can be deciphered. Um, and um, the, the chair also has a nice surprise that, you know, under, underneath it, it's, it looks like it's growing through, but it doesn't actually grow through. It was painted while I was working on it upside down. Um, so here are, here are some other works that are a little, uh, perhaps more literal. Um, Ikebana, which is this giant leaf. And this area is, is kind of representative of some of the work that I did in Japan, but, but some of the ideas and the, the theme of, um, of black and white, um, which has been a strong component of my work from the beginning, it still is. I'm working again in black and white right now. But these two big oil stick paintings were done in Japan, and I had been making oil stick paintings, but was allowing a little more figuration to come out of those. Um, the, the table is um, evocative of a scholar's table, and I made my own equivalents of scholar's objects, including this, this rock, which really wasn't a rock at all, but a piece of driftwood from Lake Erie and I adorned it with these little growths and then cast it. Um, this um, little piece, which when closed, you don't see anything. You just see a closed round box, and when you open it, you get a surprise. So when it's, it's called ba banzai, which means surprise in Japanese. This was a little sushi tray that I, um, I shop for myself every day in the three months that I was in Japan and, and cook my own food. and. Um, and then the, the boxes, which represent kind of um, the idea of, of things in pairs, which comes from Chinese um, culture and, and specifically royalty. Like things were made for imperial families um, in pairs. And when I went to China, um, the first time I went to Japan, I also went to Beijing. And the second time I went to Japan, I think some of these things, they enter your, your brain. You're not really sure. Um, it, that they're ever going to manifest themselves in a work of art, but then sometimes they do, and, and you can very specifically see how they do. Um, um, waking Dream for Kurosawa, here is, um, I'm still working with this idea of, of, of transitions from black to gray to white, and here, these are strictly striped, um, stripes that are overlapping, and I'm making this transition. And the paintings that I'm making right now in the studio are literally um, lightened or darkened with each um, layer. Each layer is about three or four strokes um, that are visible, not visible, they, they read as one layer, but making a painting from white to 
black or, or a dark gray. And so they're very soft, subtle transitions and they almost look airbrushed, but you'll have to see those on the next show. <laughs> this is in the lab. This was an early work of encaustic from, I think, 99. And um, I, it looks like a random pattern growing on the surface that might suggest that it's growing outside and even behind the surface. I use the wood grain to create my composition. Um, but it was, it was um, the beginning, I think, of an idea that I, I'm still very concerned with, which is the idea of uncontrolled nature and also our man's tampering with nature and the, the possible unknown consequences of, of, uh, of tinkering with, with, um, with nature. So um, this work on the floor here, um, which is called Dream of Mary Shelley. And um, as you may notice, there are a couple of Frankenstein representations here. And um, this is a panel that was painted on for an entire month. And it's, it's both beautiful and kind of scary. And, um, and, and that's, that's what, <laughs> that, that sort of shows both sides of, of, uh, of working with with nature and scientifically trying to change it. That it can have positive effects, it can have beautiful effects, but it can have deleterious effects, but we, we don't really know. So it's not really a moral um, statement, but an observation that i uh, rather focused on. And uh, here's another um, tribute to Pollock, Dream of Pollock. Um, this work is, is the work that I gave to the New Britain Museum in Boissonne, which means uh, to poison or to kill. And um, the idea uh, for the title came to me from, from nature sometimes having very bright colors to suggest danger um, you know, to other animals or insects that if you eat me, you might die. So that's kind of the idea with these very bright, brightly colored things that they look like nature, they look unreal, but sometimes nature looks unreal too.